After being shelved for over a year, I was very excited and hopeful when I heard Salem's Lot was finally going to get released, albeit straight to streaming and an opening scene. I knew I was in trouble. All right, Salem's Lot 2024, directed by Gary Doberman, is a remake of the original Salem's Lot miniseries, which is over three hours long and based off a Stephen King book and was shelved for a while. We finally got the remake, dropped on Max, and you know, we were wondering when we saw that it was gonna be released or that it was shelved, what was the cause of it? Is it really that bad? Or is there just some behind the scenes stuff going on? Could this be another case of trick or treat where it was shelved for a long time? Or even Cabin in the Woods, two fantastic horror films that were shelved for a while. Then Salem's Lot came out, reviews started trickling out, and it was clear that there were definitely some issues with the film. Let's get right into the positives, the things that Salem's Lot does do pretty well. The first thing is, well, it simply looks nicer than the older miniseries. Now, there's something to be said for 70s style filmmaking, and I think it really adds to the miniseries, but the new remake does have a very polished look. It has a lot of good practical effects work here and there that, while sparse, do look good when they're used. I do really like the casting of Lewis Pullman as Ben Mears. Personally, I prefer him than the original actor. While the original actor was decent, uh, not bad by any means, but I, I gravitated towards Lewis, Lewis Pullman in this film. I thought he played the character pretty well, plus he was a little more, I don't know, relatable, a little more human, I think, in certain parts. What they did with this character is a different story, but I do like him in the role. I also like Mackenzie Lee as Susan uh, again. I think that her casting, it was, she was a little more, I don't know, human. I could connect to her a little better. Again, not her character necessarily in the film, but the way she played it as well as a little bit of the character development and the way she was written. I just thought that those two casts did really good in their job and what they were given. Also, Jordan Preston Carter as Mark, who's a very pivotal character in this film. And if you've seen the original, he plays the boy who is a very important part of the story development. While again, as I keep mentioning, the character work and story here is different than the original, but I really liked him in this cast. He was much more believable to me as this boy who is kind of like taking no crap from people and going to be going taking on vampires by himself. I was a little bit not quite on board with the original miniseries um, when he just kind of showed up at the house to kill the vampires. And I think they do a much better job showing a kid who kind of comes from a background and is going to take no crap from people. So when stuff starts happening and he wants to investigate and get revenge, I think that it's much more believable. However, they lost that element of the original where the boy is really connected to these horror icons, really into horror movies, and doesn't quite have that relationship with his parents where he's kind of this outcast kid. Uh, that was very lost, but I do think that Jordan, as the actor, was really good in the role. The atmosphere in Salem's Lot is pretty cool. As I kind of mentioned, the way that it's shot, I don't think it's like the best shot film, but a lot of the lighting, the set design, and a lot of the details that we're putting into making the film feel like the original miniseries with like the fog and haze and stuff in the air all look pretty cool. I do like the town for the most part. I like the house a little bit better. The uh, Mars and house in this one I like a little bit better. Not necessarily the details of the inside, but just the way it looks on the outside and also the way it's kind of up away from town in this film works a little better for me than the original. I do also like the addition of Bill Camp's character in here. While most of the story elements that they change and character decisions that they change in here don't really benefit the film. I do think Bill Camp's character as well as the Doctor, uh, I actually kind of like them in here and the way they were included in this little group of people going against the vampires. My last positive is the ending of the film. I actually think it works a little bit better than the original miniseries. I'm not going to go into spoilers. They changed some things, but 
the actual just climax of the film at the movie, the drive-in theater, I think actually works pretty well for the most part. I enjoyed that. It felt unique and as i'll get into my negatives in a second most of the film feels very paint by numbers copy and paste and the ending felt like something different it felt like they actually created something that stood on its own and i rather enjoyed that all right let's get into the negatives the things that i do not like about salem's lot and you know i really wanted to give this one a fair shake i did but boy it's just so boring and so paint by numbers the entire film can basically be summed up to taking pieces of the miniseries and copying them without actually creating a new story so it's like they took a piece copied it and then they were like well we need to change things that connect those scenes so then when you take a scene that means something or has some sort of story and you copy it but then try to change the stuff in the middle. What do you get? You get a disconnected film that doesn't make sense logically and doesn't flow because you're just trying to copy something that doesn't fit into the script that you wrote. Right off the bat, when I was introduced to the character of Straker, or the actor who plays Straker, and I'm not going to try to pronounce his name, I knew we were in some serious trouble. The opening of this film is just so dull and the dialogue is so bad. I was like thinking to myself, what are they what are they trying to do with this? Are they trying to copy the original? Because it just pales in comparison. I mean, it's just nowhere near the same. Straker, I'm sorry to the actor who plays Straker, but oh boy, just nowhere like not even close to the same level of intensity and captivation that the original Straker had. And boy, is he an important character. I mean, he really feels like a side character in this film. The actor, I'm sorry, but he's not good at all. And then what he's given to work with also just they butchered his character completely. In my opinion, Barlow always takes a backseat to Straker. While he is a scary and intense character on his own, he's a very important part of the series, but in my opinion, Barlow is still kind of backseat to Straker, who really is the evil presence of the film and the sort of driving evil in the miniseries that sort of stirring up stuff in the town and really what Stephen King, in my opinion, was trying to, I think, you know, tell more of the evil goings with a human connection than an actual vampire. And, you know, with Stephen King's writing in the miniseries, it's a lot more about this, the different evil things that are going on, the darkness and the um, things that are taking over the town and the sickness that's taking over the town and spreading throughout, told more through, again, like Straker, the human connection than it is just about the vampire but that being said barlow in this film while still was always going to take a little bit of a backseat was just is just nowhere near as intense or scary as the as barlow in the miniseries i think the design is okay here but he just does nothing and i think that's attributed more to straker than it is even barlow because when he shows up on screen there's just nothing to latch on to there's no build up there's no surprise there's no like you know, all this evil, like foreshadowing, you're going to be happy. I think you're going to like him. I think you're gonna like him. Don't worry. He'll be here soon. Don't worry. He's coming here soon. None of that. There's none of that build up in here. So when he finally shows up and they show way too much of him, it's just, uh, it doesn't do anything. The music in Salem's Lot is not very good. And the practical effects work in here, while I said is decent when it's on display, the gore in this film is just so lackluster. I mean, this film feels to me more tame than the miniseries, which was made for TV. And this just harkens back to what I continue to say about brutality and gore. It's not just about what you show. It's about the build up to it. It's about the character. It's about what happens to them and how that gore is shown and how it is the reaction afterwards the buildup it's about what happens and it's about the aftermath these things come together to make brutality 
And when you don't have any of that, you're just showing a little bit of blood, it just feels tame. It feels like nothing because there's none of the buildup of the character work about the, there's no stakes, <laughs> literally. And also figuratively, there's no stakes in the film. And so when you do have a little bit of blood, it just feels so tame. Like nothing's really happening. Nothing matters. There's no scares in this film. And you know, there's just no, nothing. There's just nothing to it. It feels hollow. It feels soulless. The biggest takeaways, things that I could say about the Salem's Lot remake is it just feels like a copy of a copy of something and has all had all the life just completely sucked out of it, which is what Stephen King was trying to tell a story of in his story and in the miniseries, sucking the life out of a town. And this just from the get go feels completely hollow and soulless. There's just nothing there. So that's my review. And I'm just as disappointed as you are to hear that, unfortunately, Salem's Lot was delayed for a seriously good reason. I'm glad we finally got it, but boy, it's just, there's just nothing there. Thank you for watching and let me know down below what you thought of the Salem's Lot remake. And I hope you're having a fantastic October. I scared on a big bad wolf. I never see the silver line and only see the gold. I don't speak in caps, dog. Everything bold. And I put that on myself because it's a life that I done chose. I said come through. You can see me on the west side. Now it's funny how they walking with each other.